off to another project, you know, spring and fall is project time around here. And so, um, the theme for Inside the House since October of last year has been redoing the flooring. So, um, I was lucky enough to have tile floors in my kitchen and hallway, but that's it. And then I've had carpet for 20 years that's just gotten really gross. All right, so it's pretty dark in my house because it's nighttime and this is when everyone's up right now, so I'm doing stuff. And so for the last year, I've been slowly replacing my flooring in my house. So uh, November or October of last year, I took out all the carpet out of my living room floor and I put this hardwood floor in, which was a pain in the butt because I had to glue every single piece together at the seams because it was, uh, you know, really cheap stuff. It was supposed to be easy click, but it wasn't. But anyways, it looks nice now. So, got that in. We're taking out all the carpet because um, Shandon has... Um, you know, he's been sick for a while and I just don't, I want to eliminate any possibilities because in the past allergies would just create a flare up for him. So I've been getting rid of all the carpet, trying to calm his immune system down. But ever since he's had the IVIG, knock on wood, we haven't had to deal with that. But anyways, back to the, the project at hand. So I redid my living room floor, it took me a while about you know because that Shannon was really sick at that time and I the flooring what it was ridiculous because I almost just took it back but of course it was a sell on lumber liquidator and at the moment because of you know the C word the sickness that's going around they wouldn't take returns on flooring so I had to keep it and work with it and the clicking thing just wouldn't do it so I got flooring glue. I'll show you the flooring glue really fast. This is the flooring glue. I can't, I don't know why I have it out still. All right, so this is the flooring glue. Let's go right here that I had to use for the floor. So it's called Tongue and Groove Flooring Glue. See? From Lumber Liquidator. They sell it. And so, which worked out great because. This flooring was semi in the end after all the hard work and gluing every single seam together to keep it from coming apart. Um, it turned and made it r really waterproof. So this flooring is semi waterproof. Well, now it's fully waterproof. There's nothing getting in the seams. Plus, I sealed it on top of it. I put a polyurethane seal on top of it, and I, wa I waxed and everything. So it's like not gonna get damaged knock on wood so um anyways yeah i did that now the next project i did was march right before i started my youtube vlogging which i which i wish i did it sooner so i could have recorded it but i took out all the carpet out of my bedroom which is the second biggest room in this house and instead of doing the wood flooring i will never do that again and to save money, I um, sealed the cement, because my uh, under the carpet is cement. So I sealed it, and then I stained it with a brown stain, and I rubbed it in in a nice pattern to make it look variegated. It's really cool. And then I sealed it with um, sealer, and then a, like a wax sealer polyurethane and so that's really good and it's beautiful and it keeps my room clean it feels so much cleaner without carpet you know how much stuff carpet holds I mean no matter how much you I have a steam cleaner I have all that jazz no matter how much you vacuum and steam clean especially for me because I live in the country and we just you know have dirt everywhere <laughs> so it's just better to not have any carpet. And then, you know, when we moved in, the carpet was white. Like, who puts white carpet in the country? I don't know. I, our carpet, it turned out brown. I'll show you. So I pulled it all out of my bedroom in March of this year, and I did that. And I'll show you that. So, there it is. So this is what it looks like. Turn on the light. 
So, and all I do is throw, throw rugs down. It's really, really pretty. It looks real good. So that's what I'm doing in my other kids' bedrooms. So that only took me, that, that's my next biggest room was my room. And that took me just maybe a few days because it was so easy and inexpensive. And when you're doing, when you have a lot of furniture covering up the floor anyways, might as well just put throw rugs down and seal it really well. And it looks just, it, I love it. It's awesome and it stays clean. Fall and spring are my main project times. You know, besides gardening and animal stuff, I, that's when I build things or I do my major projects that, you know, because the weather's uh, just right. I'm not too hot and not too cold. So here's the before of the bedroom. So this is my boys' room. So we're doing this one first because it's Shandon's room. So see the floor? It just, it just needs cleaning. And it's just... It's horrible. And because this room is kind of wall-to-wall -wall furniture, like just beds and dressers and a toy shelf, um, I n can't pull everything out. So I'm going to have to do half the room at a time. So we're going to do this half. This is the bunk bed style. So here's a bed and then here's a bed up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull half this furniture out on this half and, and just pull it as much. I'm just going to keep the furniture against the wall and cut out all the carpet around this and do what I can and stain all of this part and then move the furniture away from the wall after the stain and ceiling dries and then just do the perimeter like that. It might be leave little markings like where I stopped but that's the only thing I can think of because I can't pull all these dressers, I mean the furniture into the rest of the house. I just don't have the room. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get started and I'll film my progression and each step that it takes to get that look if you all want to do that. So I'm going to get started. I'm just going to, I'm not going to film me pulling furniture out or anything, but um, that's my project. So I'm going to get started. I'm going to play the music too really loud because I like to listen to loud music when I do stuff, chores. Here we go. furniture piled up on this side so we got halfway out that's what the floor looks like now and then what I'm going to do now is move the dressers away from the walls and then cut around the walls and stain and do the wall part first so I can move the dressers back that's what we're going to do Alrighty, so I got all the furniture <laughs> moved into the center of the room on carpets. I'll show you. And I got pulled all the carpet up all around the edge um, and pulled up all the um, carpet tacks. Now, when you pull up carpet tacks, you just need a screwdriver and a hammer and you just pop them up and rip them out. So, um, but that leaves holes in the ground now you can fill them in which I have done with um, I've used grout and it's perfect if you want a, a level surface but I don't care because it's gonna it's like wall-to-wall -wall furniture and in my room after I stain it you can't see they see them at all they're like there you can't even see it so here let's show you so now got all those pulled up all around the edge and dog are in my way. And then I left the carpet in the center because hard moving furniture on unsealed cement. So once I get the cement sealed in, I'm going to do the closet last because I have stuff in the closet. But once I get the um, 
cement sealed and cleaned and and everything um, uh, it'll be easy the furniture slides on it but right now it's rough and it's dirty so the furniture won't slide very good so I just put the cats and dogs are <laughs> wondering what I'm doing they all follow me look at gizmo that's my cat gizmo he follows me <laughs> he thinks he's getting fed but so, he has bladder issues sometimes he pees on things and it irritates me oh but he got the tail all right but it's no all right so anyways um yeah so i have all the furniture on carpet in the middle and then once i i'm gonna do this in sections i'm doing this first and then i'm gonna finish all just around this area and once i finish this i'm gonna move the furniture back against the wall and then do the rest of the room pull the carpet up and do the rest of the room so we have to do it in two parts but first first things first first things first in the rilla all right so first things first <laughs> um is to we have to scrub and mop the floor you have to get it really really clean and i find that ammonia works really good so i'll do first a wet wet uh mop and then I'll get um, a, my scrub brush, a really good scrub brush, and scrub the floor with ammonia and and water mixture. And then we'll do another mop. And then that will be, we have to let it dry for 24 hours. So let's get to this. First thing is to wash the floor really good. Scrubbing with the, the scrub brush and the ammonia, and then I have a floor scraper to scrape any glue or padding left. And then we're going to do a clean wash with water, really, really good hot water, until the water runs clear. And there's just, you know, you want to get up all the, you know, dust from the drywall that was on there. There's all kinds of dust and stuff. They just put the carpet right over it, you know? Ugh. So. Anyways, get you have to have it spotless and squeaky clean before you can do anything. So, I'm just going to do a couple mops of water until the water's clear. So, this our, the cement looking around, feeling a lot smoother. So when I run my mop, it's not rough anymore. So I think I only need, and the water's not very dirty. So I think I only need to do over it two times with a clean, warm water. And then we'll, you'll let it dry overnight. Alrighty, so now that we're done mopping and cleaning the floor, there's a few things we're going to need. Here, I'll show you. So, I use... So, these are the things you'll need. And, um, in the past, I've stained a lot of floors and I painted a lot of cement floors and I've done it to look like tile. Um, I did it in my grandma's house and one of my old houses. I did the whole kitchen um, and I have a, a another house I did where I just did the floor solid. I helped one of my friends do it and I don't like the solid colors. 
because so I won't ever do solid and I won't ever do paint because my um, one of my friends did their garage and uh, she I don't know if she did the floor right or not but um, the solid paint peels up eventually and then you see chips and it just looks funky so if I um, when I do cement I always do variegated colors like like marbleizing it or a pattern of some sort um, if I'm going to use paint but I like the stain best because stain penetrates um, it doesn't just sit on the surface it gets absorbed more so um, I've learned that uh, staining the concrete gets a better all overall long like forever lasting look so here's the stain I like to use so I like to use the semi-transparent stain Balsberg concrete stain semi-transparent and so because it gives depending on your cement and the the technique you use it gives like a I don't know if you can see that like do you see well I showed you my floor so it gives like um you know different colored look like a darker and lighter browns tones I like that look so when I apply it, I just use a rag, a clean white rag, and, and I'll just cut this in half because that's too big. So I'll just use this. It's an old t-shirt, and I use an old t-shirt, and just this little container here that I use for painting. I like to, I use this over and over and over again for, you can see all the different color paints. I'm telling you, I paint a lot. <laughs> um, I paint people's houses, and, you know, like in the past I've helped people paint their houses. My mom, my, my aunts, and my grandmas, and my friends, and my walls, and other structures, like other houses I've had. So anyways, so what you do is you put um, the, and I do art uh, on walls too, I, um, I'll paint like art scenes on walls. So I do a lot of painting on the walls for like uh, um, trees and um, you know little scenes for children's rooms and stuff. I can do that. I did my daughter's room. I'll show you another day. Anyways, so I use this. I'll just pour it in this. I like the little and it has a little holding thing. It's just old Tupperware. And then I'll take my rag and I'll show you. I'll just dip it on the ground and then rub it in, you know, just in different patterns to get the look I want. So we're going to do that. But I like to give a, um, a seal. So with this sealer, it's an impenetrator. It's, it's called 511 Impregnator Sealer. So what it does is it goes deep into the cement the cement pulls it in and it seals it pretty well so I just dabbed my rag I didn't pour it out because this is really expensive and I want it to go far so I just dabbed my rag and rubbed it and rubbed it rubbed it and dabbed it and rubbed it and rubbed it and, rubbed it, and then you um, wait if, like five minutes and then you wipe the excess off with a dry towel and so that's just what you do and then when that's all done, I will do a floor finish, three or four coats of this on top. And if you want um, a rougher surface, if you want, in like a couple bathroom or kitchen areas, I add, I have this finish um, that has sand in it I added. So you can buy little sand particles and put in it so it creates a non-slip surface. But I'm telling you, you only need that with like painted surfaces because stain it doesn't get slippery so um yeah but that's what we're gonna do and we're gonna get to it now let's get to the staining part the exciting part we're just doing again the edges of the room so we can move this middle furniture i have in the center back and then we'll do the bigger part
you rub it in and then you pat it. Like so. And that's all you do the whole way around. And then when you're doing the edges, you push it under, push it under, and then you have a clean rag to wipe your stain off your baseboards. You know? Like so. You just keep on repeating that. Rub and pat, rub and pat. <clears throat> rub and pat, rub and pat. You have to rotate. So you pick up dirt, even though you, you, uh, even though you mopped and mopped and mopped, you still pick up some dirt. So, and that's usually under the baseboard. So I, I like to flip it over. And what's cool about stain is things like hair and sand and dirt won't stick to it. The stain will penetrate and leave the dirt loose. So it gives you a chance to, um, you know, clean it, sweep it. You don't want to mop or anything yet. You want to just sweep, sweep the top and then seal it. It's only a little bit of like sand, not much that will pop up here and there from under the baseboard. All right, let's get a new rag. I need a new rag. That one's just a little sandy. A little sandy there. Okay. Alright, All right, so now that I'm done with the seal, right, with the painting here, all the way down, get it all this. All that, that's what it looks like right now. So, all done. So now that I'm done with that, we're gonna seal all right. it. So I'm done and with the edges, and I moved the furniture back. So here's the edges, and that's what I just did. And I moved the furniture back, so now I can do, I'm gonna do half, I still have more furniture in the way, so. I have to do this half, and then I'll do the second half back here. So, let me do this half. Let's get to it. scrubbing them and now I'm going to stain as much as the floor I can with the furniture that's in the way. I was going to do half and half but I decided I'm going to just go around the one, it's the, actually one big piece of furniture I'll show you is this that's in the way. I can't really move it. It's pretty heavy on the cement, doesn't slide good. Once I seal it, like all this, it'll slide really well. So, yeah, I, I was gonna do half and half, but that's just a lot of trouble. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stain and seal, except for this small corner. This small corner right here, that corner, I'll do last. So, it, it's, you know, when you have, it's hard, you have to feather out the edges. If you don't feather out the edges, you get um, line like marks. You can tell where you ended and started the process. So what, make sure, because I made the mistake of that in my bedroom, but thank goodness the bed covers it. But make sure when you end, if you have to stop to like 
lightly feather it out so it's not such an abrupt change and you you don't want to see like the lines of where you started and stopped so that's what I'm saying anyways all done with that now what we do after we scrub Alrighty, so after you sit, you scrub and clean it until your water is clear, then you're going to um, stain however you like. That's the easy part. Staining is the easy part and sealing is the easy part. It's really what's most time consuming is even pulling up the carpet's easy. It's the scrubbing of the floor. It takes a lot of work to get it really, really clean and prepare it for the stain so the hard part's done and now we just stain it and then after we stain it we're gonna put this on and you rub it rub it rub it rub it rub it with a rag like that and rub it over with the rag and then let it dry for like five minutes and then you wipe the excess off and I that's what my I seal it first with this okay and then after I seal it with this, then I do the um, then I do the floor finish, any sealer of your choice, you know. So just put a, a, a nice seal over it, another one like a floor finish. So and I'll do four coats of this, and then I'll be done. And that it's, these things are easy, this especially because you're not rubbing. You're just using a mop, and so a roller. You can even use a roller, and you'll be just fine. So all done staining the floor and now we're gonna rub this on the top with the rag and then um, wipe the excess off, okay? A little goes a long way, you know? So you just need to drill it. Alrighty, so we're done with our 511 uh, impregnator sealer. So that sealer get, gets sucked into the pores. And now we're going to do this 
finish, which also is a sealer for so different varieties of flooring types. Um, you can do it on tile, cement, and I ha I use this for my um, laminate flooring. So I use this specifically to seal my laminate floor and all the cracks and everything. It works really well. So, and then after I sealed it, I waxed my laminate floor. <laughs> so but anyways, not this floor. We're gonna put this on evenly with the mop. We're gonna do uh, four layers, okay? Okie doke y'all, three more coats to go and then we're done. <laughs> Alrighty y'all, so I'm done with my son's, both of my son's share room, bedroom. So, that's, I'm so excited. Here's what it looks like after the floor is done. It looks like, it looks really good. I don't have very good bright lighting in here, so it's nice and shiny. Nice and shiny with the seal on, and it's so beautiful. Like, I love the variegated tones I, I do. It just reminds me, like I said before, like of a Spanish, like, I don't know, flooring, like you would do in Italy, maybe. Who knows? But uh, I've never been, but I've seen pictures. But it's so pretty, and... So that's that and then I was going to sit here and you know organize but I got to get my daughter's room done next. She's the last room in the house. She is the last bedroom in this house that has carpet. Actually huh? what's going to be last is the closet. So I have too much junk in the closet. So I stored a lot of the stuff from the bedroom in the closet so I could do the floors. So I once I get my daughter's room done. Then I'll do the closets. But I can't. So I was going to take the time to organize. Pull everything out of the closets. And get rid of clothes. A lot of it is just clothes. Because I love hand-me-downs. And I got a lot of hand-me-downs. You know for Shandon from his older brother. And then I also you know. Have family hand-me-downs and stuff. I just got to have. I love those hand-me-downs. So. Um, but I, had, I just got to go through it all and organize but that will just take me too much time and then the holidays will come before I even know it and I won't have my daughter's room done so we're gonna wait on that what we're gonna do is do my daughter's room next and just pull now that this floor is done we're gonna pull all of the the junk I threw in her room and just put it in here you know her furniture like her bed and stuff put it in here so we can do her floor and then my house will be complete like dust free that carpet just holds so much dust and stuff I just who invented carpet because it's not a good idea I don't know what in the world we do that for I'd rather have my floors like cement and you know what I'm saying cement is like tile it's like it's silly when you tile floors it's basically putting cement on top of cement so why not just stain it? Why not just stain it and make it look beautiful? And seal it and you'd be amazed. Well, the floor, you'd think the floor is going to get cold. Well, it doesn't. Because the stain and the sealant that you put on really like, it just maintains the temperature pretty nicely. So like in the winter, it absorbs the heat so it's warm. And then in the summer, it's cool. So. And then I just put throw rugs down. I got, um, Shandon picked out the rugs because he has a hard time with change. Um, we got rugs to put down. Like, I had to get him to agree with pulling the carpet out and let him pick out the rugs. So, he, he's all for it as long as he got to pick the rugs out. So, we got two brown rugs. They're kind of carpety looking rugs for him. So, that's what we got. And now, off to do my daughter's room. And I'll show you that in another video. Alright, so that's how you seal and stain a floor. We'll just talk to y'all later, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Okie dokie. Peace.